This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini and these are your headlines. The PM backs Ukraine as potential war crimes are discovered in the Kyiv region. A woman is arrested after she drowned her own child. And there is good news as the Prime Minister hints at the end of wearing masks. First, more from our main story. Prime Minister Hun Sen this week again strongly condemned the Russian invasion of Ukraine, calling it an act of aggression that is unacceptable to Cambodia. He added, Cambodia's foreign policy depends on international laws and the UN Charter. His comments came as the Russians retreated from the area around Kyiv, their tanks now moving towards the east. And what they leave behind is devastation and utter despair. Ukraine said it had regained control of many areas in the region of Kyiv, with Russian troops retreating from around the capital. And as they do so, evidence emerges of possible civilian killings by Russian troops. AFP reporters saw at least 20 bodies, all in civilian clothing, strewn across one single street in a town near the capital. Other victims have been found dead, shot execution style, with their hands tied behind their backs. One of the deceased had his Ukrainian passport left open beside his corpse as some kind of message, said an AFP journalist who had accessed the ravaged town. The mayor of the town confided that all the civilians had indeed been shot, but none of them were wearing military uniforms. The British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss said, I am appalled by the atrocities in the town of Bukha and other towns within Ukraine. Reports of Russian forces targeting innocent civilians are abhorrent. The UK is working with others to collect evidence and support a war crimes investigation and those responsible will be held to account, the UK Foreign Secretary has said. The International Criminal Court has already opened a probe into possible war crimes committed within Ukraine, and several Western leaders, including US President Joe Biden, have accused Russia's Vladimir Putin of being a war criminal. Last week, we reported on a police officer that was torturing a child as it would not stop crying. It is hard to think of a more tragic story. But this week, such a story appeared that was so eerily similar, but so different, in that the conclusion was even more tragic. A mother took her own baby, a child of one year of age. She carried it into a field and threw it into the muddy waters of a local canal and the infant drowned right in front of her. Her reason was, it would not stop crying. Having no milk to feed the crying baby, the mother had decided to throw her 13-month-old infant into the water, knowing it would be a certain death sentence to the child. The 22-year-old female was arrested by police and confessed that she had killed her own child as it was crying from 9pm to 4am and she had no milk to feed it as she was very poor. She had told the police that she had to take care of another child and decided to drown the infant to ease her burden. According to Battenbong police, they found the child dead in the canal and subsequently arrested the mother. A Together for Children executive director said that what the mother did was an evil and criminal act and she must be punished in accordance with the law. He went on to say, Instead of throwing her baby into the canal, she could have asked other families to adopt her baby 
there are plenty of families who want to adopt children. If she had no money to buy milk, she could have asked people to assist her financially. He urged the relevant authorities to educate the villagers on how to solve their problems and not to resort to killing their own children. It's inhumane to act like that, he said. Even an animal loves its baby and tries to raise it at all costs. The main challenge to the poor people is the lack of spirit to solve problems and to find solutions. The canal lays at the back of the woman's house and will forever live in local legend as a place of unspeakable horror and unimaginable cruelty. A recent Khmer Times investigation has revealed that up to 100 Malaysian youths are being held captive in Cambodia by a syndicate that forces them to scam people online. One of our informants, who is being forced to work for the criminal gang, gave us a detailed account as to how the operation runs and what it's like to work on the inside. Our informant, who of course does not wish to be named, has said to us, we don't have mobile phones. I can only secretly send you emails during working hours. If I get caught, I will be buried in Cambodia. He spoke of living and working within the compound and he said the business is well equipped and set up as a self-contained one-stop online scamming and online betting and gambling centre. One mother said she was afraid of what would happen to her son and pleaded with the authorities to help save him. Several months ago, her son had called her in distress, claiming that he was told of a lucrative job as a telemarketer and was taken to Cambodia illegally. The building he ended up at was locked from the outside and there were men with guns at the doors. Other victims have managed to call home in despair and tell of violent beatings and how they were bound in slavery, working for a ruthless syndicate. The Foreign Ministry of Malaysia has said, We are in the process of gathering more detailed information. If there are new developments, we shall notify the public as soon as we are able to do so. Ourselves at the Khmer Times broke the story of the illegal call centres and online gambling sites and we shall continue to investigate. As it develops, we will keep you updated on the plight of those held against their will, beaten and treated as slaves for the enrichment of a ruthless few. Big changes to air travel in and out of the kingdom. It would appear that the Siem Rip airport in its current form is to close and all traffic will be diverted to the new, much larger airport when it's constructed. Many had hoped the current airport would stay open and service shuttle flights as it is much more centrally located, but that it seems is not to be. The existing Siem Rip airport will be suspended by the end of 2023. The minister in charge said that the current Siem Reap airport will be closed once the new one is open and running smoothly. The chairman of the steering committee said that the current airport is only two and a half kilometres from Angkor Thom and this proximity threatens to endanger the ancient temples. The committee of the Angkor Historical Sites has urged that the construction of the new Siem Rip International Airport goes ahead to protect monuments from environmental damage. The new international airport under construction is a 4E class, with runways measuring 3,600 metres and it is capable of receiving all types of aircraft, even the super jumbos. 
The new airport has 38 air bridges and when launched in October of 2023 will be able to handle about 7 million passengers a year. Expansion is already planned with a second and third phase to expand capacity to 10 million and then 20 million passengers a year. It is a far cry from only a few years ago when a man sat behind a solitary wooden desk with a stamp. He would stamp your passport and just wave you through with a smile. After our terribly sad story earlier of the child being murdered, let's have some good news. A great step to getting back to normal was hinted at by the Prime Minister, and that is the abolition of masks. The masks have been an encumbrance to all, and soon, just maybe, we won't have to wear them. PM Hun Sen has indicated that the government is considering ending the mandatory wearing of masks, at least in some provinces. The PM has said that he is considering relaxing the rules for mandatory mask wearing in Priya for here and Ode Minche provinces as a trial, which will presumably, if successful, lead to more widespread relaxation of the mask rules. In his remarks, the PM stated, I will order the stopping of using masks in provinces to test. As an example, we test in Priya Vahir province. People will no longer need to wear masks. This would be a welcome change and makes sense as the latest figures are even more good news. And as cases continue to fall month after month, the death rate is often reported at being at a very welcoming zero and nearly all cases detected are from PCR testing, not so much from people being hospitalised and in danger. The Kingdom has opened its airports, its schools and its service industry with no restrictions, and now, in 2022, it is looking to reset and for us all not to live in fear or be encumbered by masks. And at last, be able to see one another again in our day-to-day -day transactions. Now it's time to look at our sports news. The World Cup starts the 21st of November in Qatar. The first game of the tournament will be Senegal playing the Netherlands. Either Wales, Scotland or Ukraine will go into Group B after the remaining European playoff games are completed. England's first fixture takes place on the same day and sees them play Iran. The two sides have never met in an international football match, so that will be a first. France are sitting pretty in Group D, with Denmark, Tunisia and, potentially, Peru. It is going to be a superb tournament, and one team that will be cheered on like no other is Ukraine. The entrance they receive taking to the pitch will be like none ever witnessed in World Cup history. Now we turn our attention to the Premier League and see all the latest results. This week we take a look at the latest scores and what we see is Liverpool taking out Watford 2-0. Absolutely no surprise. And we get the same result when we see Man City and Burnley and Man City take out Burnley 2-0. That is completely unsurprising because remember, Burnley is that team that hasn't scored since the fall of the Roman Empire. It's when we cross over to the right side of the screen, we see an absolute shocker. And what that is, is Brentford went to Chelsea and taught them how to play football in an absolute masterclass of a game. Brentford took out Chelsea 4-1 and they couldn't have hit them at a worse time because they're in a cat and dog fight with Arsenal as to who's going to get third place. 
Now it's time to look ahead and see what the weather has in store for next week. Not the most exciting weather chart we've ever had. It's basically sunshine and potential showers right across the board. But let's have a look at those temperatures. The middle of next week, it's going to reach 97 degrees. And when you add that in with the humidity, which could peak at 70%, you better get ready for some humid weather. This has been the Khmer Times News. You can contact myself at the studio by mailing us at ktnewsstudio at gmail.com. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by downloading our app from your app store. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next Saturday for your weekly roundup.